Well, first of all, a few words about the countries in Eurasia. Uh, these are Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Georgia, uh, uh, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia. This is a very diverse region that is adapting itself to post-Soviet Union era. So the first challenge is the challenges of the organizations, the governments in terms of the modernization, reforms and competitiveness in the global markets. So we as PwC are developing our people in order to be able to support the economic uh, reforms and developments in our countries. In terms of the challenges, I would uh, put it into the period until 2008 when we have experienced uh, very fast growth in all our countries and after 2008 when we went into financial crisis we had to adapt to the new realities. I think in terms of the new challenges that we have uh, are perhaps in four folds. One is uh, China which is our neighbor, a very important market. The slowdown in China is obviously a concern and creates its own challenges. The second is the Russia-Ukraine uh, dispute that has effectively taken a long period of time to settle uh, and that created uh, uncertainties and adversity in the economic uh, climate. The third, of course, is as a result of global crisis, we saw commodity prices falling. Uh, oil and uh, gas and mining are the main commodities of these countries and clearly the collapse in the uh, commodity prices is putting significant pressure on the uh, public uh, economics. Uh, the fourth one is uh, an opportunity and a challenge and that is the Eurasian uh, Economic Union uh, that was recently set up with Russia, Belarus. Kazakhstan, uh, recently Armenia and Kyrgyzstan joining. Whilst it is uh, early to say the, uh, the, the benefits of this uh, economic union, it does present challenges in the sense that it's come to at a time when Russia-Ukraine situation is uh, essentially causing uh, uh, upset in the, in, the, in the environment. So these are the main, main uh, if you like, macro challenges that we have. In terms of our people, of course, we need to make sure that we develop our people in a resilient way uh, with a new thinking, innovative and creative thinking in terms of our clients' uh, problems and issues. Since it was founded in 1957, EADA has been proud to work with some of the smallest and largest uh, companies in the world in order to train their high potentials and their executives in order to facilitate uh, the development of teams. Uh, for the last um, 18 months, nearly two years now, we've been working with PricewaterhouseCoopers in uh, Eurasia very closely in the development of uh, our most innovative uh, program in terms of an organization focusing on finance and strategic leadership. The aim here is to provide uh, the participants with the technical skills in financial analysis together with um, those abilities and soft skills, we might call them, which will allow them to work uh, with their teams and to develop uh, these teams to the fullest of their potential. Um, it is still an incipient program. We are now proud to have 21 uh, high potentials from PricewaterhouseCoopers in Golvato, the residential training centre, fully engaged with this program. And over the next few years, we hope to be able to work much more closely both with PricewaterhouseCoopers and with PwC's clients in developing this uh, type of programs tailored and suited to their needs. So we decided to join up with the other uh, to effectively form an uh, alliance uh, in terms of supporting our clients primarily uh, in, in these uh, changing, changing times. We started that in the oil and gas sector uh, and I expect this will uh, resume uh, in, in, in future uh, after a short if you like, break uh, because of the uh, commodity cycle experience we're going through. But today I'm delighted that uh, we're actually uh, going through this for our people in PwC. Uh, about 22 of our key talent are here uh, this week going through the uh, program. Uh, and it's been a great start and I'm looking forward to the next uh, days uh, with, uh, with, with a lot of interest. I, I think you know, we, we often when we're out together with a partner group of PwC and me representing EIDA, we often discuss this point. 
quite often when PwC approach a client, the business model of PwC is to take highly qualified, specialized individuals and get them to consult to a client, two or three individuals within the client organization. Whereas when one adopts more of a, an academic uh, engagement, it, the ratio tends to reverse. What you have is 20 client staff engaging with one or two skilled people who are there with a specific goal and objective of training a larger body of staff. So in fact it's an interesting uh, you know, corollary, if you like, to the PwC model and I actually found that the clients recognize that they, they're extremely complementary. Well actually the, the focus that we adopted with PwC and the Yada in Kazakhstan is we started to look at, if you like, what the Soviet system did extremely well was focus on operations and the asset side of the business really well and we didn't think there was a lot we could bring to operational management. But if you consider the major challenges that have faced Kazakhstan and, and Russia in particular over the past 20 years have tended to take place on the financial side of the balance sheet. Managing their own capital markets, raising money that investors are prepared to put into Kazakhstan and into Russia. And so with PwC we identified that that would be an, an interesting area for us to go into and, and so, it's, so it's proved. So we really focused on the financial aspects of the balance sheet, structured finance and helping PwC staff and clients understand how to knit together the financial needs of a company together with the asset side of the balance sheet. In terms of strategic leadership, pretty much the same um, gap existed for us because the Soviet system really operated under a sort of command and control, top-down dictum on the operational side of the balance sheet and didn't necessarily have a highly um, integrated reflective style of management. So we've actually seen the opportunity again through some of the work that Stephen Pullman does in, in the, the leadership style and leadership level um, structure to go in, into Kazakhstan and actually contribute at, at a fairly senior level, it should be said, to directors um, within Kazakhstan on trying to understand the benefits of adopting less of a command and control uh, leadership style and more of a reflective leadership style. And hence the, 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 the focus that we came up with as a Yada is finance and strategic leadership. So that's the background.